You're listening to Health Professional Radio. My name is Wayne Buckler and joining me today is Dr. Linda Worrell Carter. Dr. Worrell Carter is the founder and CEO of Her Heart. Welcome to the program, Linda. Thank you and thank you for having me on uh, the program, Wayne. It's wonderful. It's our pleasure. Now, Her Heart doesn't absolutely lead me to understand what you do. So can you start by explaining what it is that you do and what geographical footprint you operate in? Yes, yes, absolutely. And perhaps just to link it to um, my background too. So um, at the end of uh, last year, I decided after uh, 15 years of doing research in uh, the area of women and heart disease that uh, perhaps we weren't necessarily needing more research in this area. What we did need is awareness. So I decided to um, establish a not-for-profit and a charity, which um, we've called Her Heart which is dedicated to um, creating awareness around women and heart disease. And uh, it's interesting that you've talked about the ge- geographical footprint because actually we, um, we launched um, in June of this year and we anticipated uh, having you know, perhaps some widespread coverage around Australia. But what we didn't realise that we would have so much interest worldwide. So uh, thanks to Google Analytics, we're now able to track where everybody's coming from um, on the website and we've actually had over 50 different countries within literally several weeks of uh, launching and uh, now we've had actually just over 70 different countries access the website and we've received some amazing feedback so um, that's really great. Linda, why is there a particular difference between her heart and his heart? Is is there a research finding that supports us? Yes, that's right. So I guess Um, And as I mentioned, you know, having done a lot of extensive research in this area, um, there are distinct differences between men and women. And uh, for many years, we didn't actually realize this. So it wasn't necessarily that women were um, purposely excluded from um, the research, but it was just generally thought that um, heart disease wasn't an issue for women. So um, there's I've sort of looked at um, trying to pin it down to five reasons. And I I think there's five reasons to why, you know, this is happening for um, women and um, why in general the community don't know that one in three women will die of heart disease. So, Linda, if you've narrowed this down to five reasons, can you go through them for us? Yes. One of the things that um, the first thing I think is, um, in general, this lack of awareness. So... The first thing is that we can actually do some things about our risk factors, but we can't do um, some things about the fact that we're um, born with a family history. For example, I have a family history of heart disease. So there's other things we can't do, such as um, an a change, which is our age. Um, we know that there's an issue with women when we actually have, when we hit menopause, so there's not a lot we can do about that. And also there's um, some links with different ethnicities. So it impacts on people from a Torres Strait Island or an Aboriginal background. So they're also found to be at risk. However, we can actually do a lot about other risk factors. We know that inactivity is a significant risk factor because we're talking now about sitting being the new smoking. So we can definitely have um, impacts on other things such as um, getting our lipids or our cholesterols within normal levels, um, stopping smoking. This is the biggest thing that we can do to actually um, have a positive impact on our risk factor profile. And also we can keep things like our blood pressure and our diabetes under control. I guess with risk factors, what people don't know is that you actually only need one cardiac risk factor. So one cardiac risk factor needs to be elevated to have a significant impact on your cardiac profile. And when they've looked at women who have had heart attacks, 90% of them have actually only had one elevated risk factor. And many women in Australia, that's up to 90%, actually has more than one elevated risk factor. So they actually have two or three risk factors. Mm, I see, and that's that's got to push their profile right up. 
That's right. So the second thing that um, I think is really important to note is that there is a difference in symptoms for men and women. And women don't recognise the symptoms. They seem to think they're going to get the same symptoms as men. So that is men t- typically get a lot of chest pain. They get chest pain going down and this radiates down their left arm. They mm-hmm. feel very sweaty and it often comes on um, fairly suddenly. Whereas women tend to feel short of breath. They'll often feel very nauseated. Their pain tends to radiate through to their back, up to their jaw, even though they may have some central chest pain. So these difference in symptoms can be quite confusing to women. And also, I think sometimes health professionals don't pick them up. Yes. I didn't realise there was such a difference in the way it presented as a disease. That's right. And um, we know now that women also have, you know, differences in their coronary arteries, and I won't go into it, called sort of microvascular disease. So this then precipitates women to sort of thinking, well, they don't recognise the signs and symptoms, so they're not as easy be able, um, easily able to ask for help. And I think that um, some of the work that we have, have done, which I'll, I'll talk about, is um, how health professionals can also have a raised awareness around this. So it's almost a sequential problem because women don't recognise the symptoms and know they're at risk, they delay in getting treatment. So in women that we've interviewed, for example, will say, well, I wasn't really sure um, I decided to phone a friend and really what they should be doing is dialing triple zero and going to hospital. Some of the other things they'll do is not prioritise themselves. So they'll say, well, I wasn't really sure. I decided to make sure everything was, you know, organised at home. I had my mother to take to a hospital appointment. I had this and I had that. So they tend to put other people above themselves and really put themselves at risk because of this. So I think that one of the, the key things we need to, to look at is getting um, a real awareness so that women, even if they're not sure and they sort of feel a little bit embarrassed, literally you don't want to die of embarrassment. And it's critical that women get to hospital to be able to also get the required treatment. So over the last um, decade or so, I've also had some wonderful PhD students. And one of um, my PhD students, Dr. Lisa Kuhn, who is an emergency nurse herself, did some great research um, and found that women weren't allocated as high a risk score in the emergency department as men. That's an interesting finding too, isn't it? Yeah. So I think that one of the issues that that we have is that, you know, health professionals, so what we don't want to be doing is pointing the finger or blaming anyone or saying, well, women don't know this and they don't do that and GPs don't pick it up because that's not helpful at all. Um, What we do want to do is is highlight where the the gaps are and um, where we can perhaps increase awareness and awareness. Within our professional colleagues, you know, one of the things is in in the emergency department. And we know that it isn't just in specifically at one hospital because we um, benchmark the results. um, Lisa benchmarked this across and looked at the data across different hospitals around Victoria. And similarly, women were given a lesser score than men. The offshoot of that is that obviously women are referred for less testing. So they're less likely to receive the life-saving treatments too. Yes, I can see how that would all cascade together. And I guess the fifth thing, just just quickly, is that there's poorer outcomes of, in women. And there, obviously the poor, there's poorer outcomes because of that um, patient trajectory, if you like. Yes. You know what I mean? The fact yes. that it's taken longer to get um, to have treatment and um, heart attack in women is actually more fatal than men. Mm-hmm. So they're more likely to die, they're twice more likely to die in the following year. They're more likely to get um, physiological and psychological complications, heart failure. So, you know, it, it, it really is critical that we um, attend to these, I guess, misconceptions and um, look at increasing, increasing awareness. And we hope today, as a result of our chat, we'll be able to help with some of those misconceptions. Um, as I mentioned to you before the interview, 
most of our woody and so clinicians in either acute care and some in aged care. So with a little bit of luck, some of those today will be hearing you and going, oh, maybe I or my patients fit that pattern. Maybe I should pay a little bit more attention. Now, how do people get in touch with you, Linda? So we've actually, I guess I'd like, what I'd like to say in that um, and add to what you've just said, it isn't a bad news story because in actual fact, heart disease is 80% preventable. I think there's nothing more than depressing than to, to give a whole scenario of all the bad news, which yes. I, I feel as if I've done. I mean, the good news is, you know, when something's 80% preventable, there's so much to do. And, and what we are really wanting to do is significantly increase awareness around this and, you know, work with different groups in this space because worldwide there is a campaign around the world which is called um, Go Red for Women, um, which is sort of wearing a red, a red dress on a, a national day, which uh, this year in 2015 was June 11. Um, there is a lot of advice we can um, give and we have established um, a, a range of different social media. We have a website, which is www.herheart.com dot org dot au we have um a we have twitter a twitter if you go to the website you can see all the different social media we've got an instagram page we've got a very active you know, facebook um page and i think that there's the response we've had to the website and the social media has been phenomenal because it's very easily digestible information that we're giving out we're making it very consumer driven. Um, so, for example, one of the things we're, we're all um, not getting enough of is sleep. Sleep has a profound effect on many aspects of your well being, including your heart. So, you know, there's seven reasons for getting a good night's sleep. <laughs> so, I think that um, people will relate to it on a personal level as well as a professional level. Linda, thank you for being with me today. It's been lovely to, to have a chat with you, and your passion just comes bubbling out of you when you talk. It's lovely to hear. I'll mention that website again because I'm always getting in trouble for not, not giving enough warning about websites. It's www.herheart.org.au and you can contact Dr. Linda Wild Carter there um, along with a range of information um, to support the issue of heart disease in women. Yes, well, thank you very much for... Um allowing me to um, showcase the, this work because it is, it is critically important that we uh, look at addressing this because we certainly uh, need to be getting the message out there because, you know, there's so many mothers, wives, sisters, daughters dying unnecessarily and it's one of the top priority areas for, um, you know, nationally and internationally that, that needs addressing. Well, today we've done our little bit to help with that awareness. If you just missed my interview, it's available on our website at www.hpr.fm as a transcript. It's also available as an audio archive on SoundCloud and on YouTube, and you can access both of those from the Health Professional Radio website at www.hpr.fm. This is Wayne Buckler for Health Professional Radio.